I'm going to show you a beginner machine learning project, and it's not just another Kaggle notebook. Too many projects are trapped within the walls of a single Jupyter notebook. And if that's you, it's time to break out. We are going to use popular tools to train a logistic regression model to predict heart disease and build a simple web user interface for it. First, we'll go over the project structure in VS Code. Then we'll explore the heart disease data set, and then we'll use logistic regression to train our model and save the model to our local computer. And lastly, we'll build a simple web user interface using Streamlit. Let's go. Real world projects are not in a single Jupyter notebook. They have databases in AWS, separate teams to do exploratory data analysis, model registries, deployment monitoring, and more. We are going to take the first step towards that by using a simple repo structure instead of a single Kaggle notebook. Let's take a look at my GitHub repo. If I scroll down and look at the readme, you can see a picture of what the final website is going to look like. But now let's talk about the structure by looking at the left-hand column here. We're gonna have a folder for the data. Then we have a folder for EDA or exploratory data analysis, where we will use a Jupyter notebook to explore the data. I didn't say there were going to be no Jupyter notebooks. I just said that all of our code wasn't gonna be entirely in a single one. Then we've got this training folder where we're going to train the logistic regression classifier and this models directory where we're going to save the models. And finally, we have the streamlit directory where we create the streamlit web user interface. Now let's switch over to VS Code and walk through the project. So let's start with the data directory. Here I've got the CSV file with all the heart disease data that I downloaded from Kaggle. And here I have a simple Python function that just reads in the data and splits it into a training set and a test set. So let me first go into that directory, CD data, and now let me run that script. Python split data. There we go. Now we've got these two data sets for training and testing. Now let's move on to exploratory data analysis. Let me open up this Jupyter notebook and let's go through it. So I'm going to really quickly take you through this notebook. We're not going to look at everything, but basically what I do is I look at every single feature to try to learn more about it so I can be more informed when training the model later. So here I import some basic functions like pandas, for manipulating the data and Seaborn and matplotlib for plotting the data. Here I read it in. You can see some of the features and their values here. Scrolling down. Here is what we're trying to predict, whether or not a person has heart disease or not. You can see that the data is pretty balanced. We have about the same number of people with heart disease and without heart disease. Now let's look at age. So here what I've done is I've plotted the age and I've binned it into groups of one. So every single column here represents one year. And you can see based on this graph that older people tend to have more heart disease than younger people. And all the rest of the features, I basically do the same exact thing. If you want to look at the analysis more closely and see what I found, then you can go check it out on my GitHub repo. Link is in the description. Now let's move on to training the logistic regression model. So I'll go to the training folder, open up that Jupyter notebook. So this notebook, we're actually gonna go through step-by-step step and run all the cells. So here I'm importing some basic libraries. Done. And now I'll load the data. You can see these are the two data sets that we just previously created right here. Now let's move on to pre-processing. So when I did my exploratory data analysis, I thought that these four features looked pretty interesting. So I chose them as the features we'll use to predict heart disease from. There are other techniques that you can use to narrow down which features are best, but here I just picked these four because I thought they were interesting during EDA. So I'm going to grab them from the training data and the testing data. And I'm also going to grab the labels, whether or not they have heart disease or not, from the training data and testing data and store them into these variables on the left. All right, so continuing with our pre-processing, we're going to do the same thing on the training data as we do on the testing data. So let's start with this line here. What I'm doing for age and max heart rate, since these are numerical values, I'm using the min-max scalar to scale them between zero and one. Since logistic regression is a model that uses distance, it benefits from this type of scaling. So here I'm going to fit and transform the data on these features and then override them over here. Now for sex, I need to replace male M and F female 
with one and zero because machines don't understand letters, they need numbers. And then on this line, similarly to male and female, I'm setting exercise angina to one or zero. This basically means if the patient felt chest pain while they're performing exercise. Okay, and testing is almost identical, except you'll see we're only calling transform here instead of fit transform. You want to apply the exact same transformation that you did on your training data to your testing data. So there's no need to also fit it. And you'll see these are identical. Let's run this and look at some data. Okay, so you can see these are all between zero and one, and these are either zero or one. We can now describe them to see a little more information. I'll let you pause the screen and look at that if you'd like. Now moving on to the actual training. Like I've mentioned a few times now, we're going to be training logistic regression. Logistic regression is a fundamental machine learning algorithm. And actually, if you'd like to learn more about other fundamental machine learning algorithms and see how to implement them in scikit-learn, you can head over to my website where I've created a free PDF. The goal of the PDF is to give you the intuition behind the fundamental machine learning algorithms and to show you how to start using them quickly with scikit-learn. Check it out, link is in the description below. So on this line, I'm importing logistic regression and then I'm going to create an instance of it here. I'm going to call fit, pass in our trading data, and then print out a score on the testing data. Let's see how well it does. 75%, that's pretty good. So in order to improve this score, we can do a lot of iterations of trying different features, doing some feature engineering, maybe trying some cross validation and grid search. But this is pretty good for our purposes right now. Let's move on to exporting the model. All right, so Pickle is a Python tool that allows you to take Python objects and save them onto your local computer. So here you can see that I'm saving both the classifier that we trained and the min-max scalar. The reason we need the min-max scalar is because when we make predictions, we also need to scale the data that the user inputs. Our model was trained on scaled data, so if it receives data that's not also scaled, it's gonna give us bad results. So that's why I'm saving both of these here to the models directory. So let me open this and run the code. There we go, you can see they're both there. And now let's productionize our code by creating a simple web user interface with Streamlit. So let me open up this folder and open up main.py. So Streamlit makes this process really simple. I copied this straight from the documentation and tweaked it for our use case. But basically you define a bunch of inputs and then you define this predict function and then you can write a message in the UI with the value that we predicted. So let's walk through this a little bit more carefully. First, I set the title. I ask for the age as a number input, the max heart rate as a number input, sex as a text input and exercise angina as a text input then i load our model and the scalar and now i define the predict function which is going to take in the model the scalar and all the features that we just got from the inputs so right here i'm creating a data frame with one row with the values that we just read in the age and max heart rate i'm scaling and the sex I'm converting to one and zero, similarly to what we did before, and same with exercise angina, I'm converting it to one and zero. Then using our model that we loaded, I call predict probability on the example data frame we just made and return the result. And that's it for the predict function, pretty simple. And then here I'm using Streamlit to write out the prediction. You have a value percent chance of having heart disease now let's run it so i'm going to go down here cd out of the data directory cd into the streamlit directory and i forget the command so let's check out my readme file scroll down streamlit run main.py let's run that and there we go we have a working website where we can get predictions using our logistic regression model for heart disease. Let's do an example. Let's say I am 50 years old. My max heart rate is 150. I don't know if that's good or bad. We'll say I'm a female and I have exercise in China. 55%, not good. It's interesting to play around with these features. Like if I put no here, about only 15%. 
What happens if I say I'm male? It increases. I remember during my EDA that males tended to have more heart disease than females, so that makes sense. I wonder what happens if we decrease the heart disease. Let's make it 85. Oh, that went up a lot. It's interesting. But what if I'm 21 years old? Went down. That kind of makes sense. I hope you found this useful. If you want to see more content from me, then you might enjoy the video on the screen. I'll see you in the next video.